Hello again guys and today what we're going to be discussing is the subject of what are the runes within paganism and I most importantly stress that point at the end within paganism because of course I could answer that question very easily and go well the runes are you know uh, remnants of the ancient pagan cultures within Europe um, they were carved upon stone or wood often, um, and they are, you know, within the Elder Fuvark, the Lesser Fuvark, and the Anglo Saxon Fuvark variations, but typically they have these meanings and, and so on and so forth. And over time, they were used as written script, but originally they had more symbolic elements. Well, that's the academic scholarly answer, yeah? Very dry, very boring. Um, and not incorrect because it's history, it's what they were or what they were seen as being from a non-pagan perspective, so we say. But the runes themselves have a hidden meaning behind them. Um, they have a more symbolic aspect to them, a spiritual side if you wish, that is incredibly important to um, understand if you want to understand the pagan perspective of what the runes are. For those of you who are actually like don't even know what the runes look like, well, I'll give you a clue. They're, they're kind of what are on my hands here, okay? These are the 24 runes of the original uh, runic scripts. Okay, ignore my part one, that's a bind rune that I uh, made myself, but there we go. So, they're the 24 runes which I've had tattooed onto me. Um, and. And the first question I get sometimes when people see those runes is, oh, what do those runes spell out? Or, you know, what does that, does that mean together? And that? Well, they're not a written script, okay? The runes originally, when they were devised, when they were first represented, were never ever used as a written script. They don't represent the original Celtic or um, uh, Germanic languages that were used by the first pagans in any way whatsoever. They do represent perhaps certain syllables or sounds, um, certain vibrations I suppose is a more accurate term when it comes to the pagan perspective, but let's just step away from this belief that they represent certain sounds and certain vibrations because that way we get too bogged down if we do within the fact that these are a kind of written versions of sounds that can be produced they're not they are as i say later on but not in their original intent instead the runes are a way really of preserving our pagan knowledge or pagan spiritualism within symbols that can be passed down through generation and generation to teach the following generations. Now the reason as such you could argue is that the, the runes themselves are a form of sacred geometry that when you look upon them they are arranged in such a way that they are there to inspire spiritual thought due to their shape. This is the belief of many. I argue against this because yes there may be certain aspects behind it that are you know they represented in certain ways but but the scripts were changed over time by pagans the Anglo-Saxon and the Lesser Fuvark for example these are um, derivatives of the original Elder Fuvark which itself is seen as a derivative possibly of an even older rune script so, uh, which I think they were, they, they believe would be called uh, Gothicism, I think it was, or, no, the Gothic script, okay, um, which has not been proved, it's simply a theory, but what I'm trying to say is, these symbols have been altered, but still then used within spiritual practice, within paganism, and so that, that alterations don't really seem to have made any difference, improvements or degradation in any form whatsoever. So we come back again to that question, what did the runes originally and still do, when you open your eyes, represent? To answer that question fully, I know I'm going about this a, a very <laughs> roundabout way, but it's the way that we have to do things, yeah? The pagan mind is not a simple linear process, the, same, the pagan mindset is convoluted, it is to encompass many different perspectives, okay? Um, and to get to our end point, we must go across a, a journey of learning, okay? And this is what I'm trying to do here, show the journey of learning, which may then open your eyes to seeing what the runes are to you. And that's the important aspect. 
to you as an individual because paganism is about the self as well as the community also it, the individual's perspective is very important the runes as such then contain a mis mystery element to them uh, a mystery element of knowledge sorry about the uh, change of uh, location guys this is England after all and it rains so I had to get out as I was saying the runes contain a mysterious element to them, a mystery knowledge. But why is this? To pagans, we believe that the knowledge best gained, the knowledge best learned, is that which is earned. Not the knowledge that is given as such. So this has value too. But for true understanding, one must acquire the knowledge for yourself, through self-experience, or through the experience of your ancestors, but through unlocking that experience, through accessing your um, m m aspect of self, that's called the Muni, okay? Which is simply the old word for memory, but it's more than your memory, it's your ancestral memory also. And so really, this is what the runes are. They're a key to unlocking knowledge. This may sound like a very abstract answer, and many of you may be thinking, well, that's kind of a load of bullshit that he's saying there. And you're more than welcome to have that opinion. But if you're ready to accept what I've just said there, then you are already not just ready to begin your path, you're far within your path of paganism because now your mind is open to the fact that knowledge can be acquired through spiritual means, through divine means if you wish. And as pagans, that's where we gain a lot of our knowledge, where we remember a lot of the knowledge which has been lost and gain new knowledge that has never been had in regards our spiritual practice. So the runes, when one is able to contemplate them in their purest form, not just as the symbols that are physically I see, but can see them with maybe the eyes of our filgia, for example, the eyes of our spiritual form, then, then it, we can acquire knowledge through them. And this is what the runes are a way of passing knowledge from the original Druids and the original pagan people to the generations that exist today. Without the runes, much of our knowledge would have been lost. And without the runes, the knowledge that could still be gained would be inaccessible. And so the runes are a spiritual key or a guidebook, a guide in essence, a spiritual guide on our path and our journey as pagans for acquiring spiritual knowledge. I've talked about the runes in previous videos. I'll be doing remakes of those videos and I'll be continuing that series because I didn't quite cover all the runes within it. Um, well I did, I, I covered the, the three A's as a summary but when I was looking at specific runes I didn't get that far and I'll probably be redoing those parts and adding new knowledge that I've acquired over time. But the, the beginning or wherever you are in your pagan studies, remember the, the specific translation of what the runes are, their, their, their specific material meaning, it's nice to know, and it helps you, it guides you, but it's not what they're really about. The meaning is the meaning that you can glean from them yourself. And one thing to remember is that paganism is not necessarily actually a religion, you wouldn't actually classify it as a religion, it's instead a spirituality. It is a set of spiritual beliefs that are individual to every indiv every person that practices it. Every individual within their pagan beliefs will practice their beliefs in a slightly different way to someone else. There are no commandments. There is no strict regime to follow. There are no specific rituals and like <laughs> what the paganism will try to make you believe. There are no strict potential rituals that you have to practice to acquire certain effects or to be a good pagan or anything along those lines. There's nothing, there's no requirement of you other than your commitment to learning about your spirituality and expanding your consciousness and when you are ready to expanding the consciousness and learning of others because that is how paganism is passed from one generation to the next and how it spreads throughout the generation also but from person to person is through teaching and listening, learning for yourself and passing on that knowledge, but you giving, not necessarily teaching people, but just showing them the way to learn the knowledge themselves a lot of the time also.
as I said, the best knowledge gained is the not knowledge that you have earned or acquired for yourself. And as I say, this is what the runes provide. For example, my original interpretation of the runes, still a standing interpretation, and how I mostly use them, is that, as I said, they are a spiritual guide to my spiritual learning. They, to me, started off in answering the question that I had that the most at the beginning, which is, how did this world, this existence, both the physical and the spiritual, come to be, how will it end, and how does it work? It evolved as I went on into all those aspects. And the room showed me what they are to me as a pagan. Now these beliefs are similar to, uh, if not identical, to a lot of other people's, but I acquired them, the knowledge for myself through the runes. And so the runes to me then act as a basis for further learning. I use the spiritual basis that I, I originally see the runes as, as then a guide book, as I say, to my spiritual uh, expansion and spiritual learning. However, when you first are able to glean the runes, as I say, with your true sight, with your spiritual sight rather than your physical, and you have to open your mind to the knowledge that is within them, you may gain another meaning altogether. You may say something else. You may comprehend them in a completely different manner to myself. And that's not wrong. As I say, paganism as a spirituality is about the individual as well as then the individual's interaction with other, but without domination. It's not about saying, this is your dogma. This is how you must live. It's not about that. First of all, freedom is one of the most valuable things we have. So why take it away from yourself by becoming part of a group that tells you the way you should think? Think is the the one thing your your sense your force is the one thing that people in theory should never be able to take away from you. But it's something that you most people willingly give all the time. People like to be told to be shepherd, shepherded. <laughs> um, as the flock, so to speak, throughout this world, um, not just through religion, but in everything in their life. They want to be told how to live, what to do, how to think, what to believe in. This is wrong. Think for yourself. And really, for me, this is, again, as I say, what, partly what the runes represent. It's your individual learning and knowledge and believing in your individual learning and knowledge that it is right. But it's that it is also malleable, it's subject to change, to evolution, to development. And I so suppose as a result, by extension, the runes to me represent really what being a pagan is. It's the pagan spirit in essence. It's about the process of self-development, self-betterment. And then when you're ready, when you have the wisdom, and the clarity of vision to do so, to then help others along a similar but not identical path, their own individual path. You help them along it. And this is what the runes represent to me. As I say, not your typical historical history book answer or your scholarly article, but an answer from a true pagan, someone who understands the runes quite deeply, but has a lot more room to go and admits it. Life is a continuous learning process. And the runes, to me, are something that guide us through that learning process. Thank you, guys.